Welcome back. You're still tuned into Trading R. Auto ancillary suppliers, Sterling Tools in focus after Centre launched PM eDrive scheme to replace FAME 2, provide subsidies and purchase of electric two-wheelers, three-wheelers, trucks and buses. Also remember in April this year, the company signed an MOU with South Korea's Yongin Electronics to establish EV components facility in India. Additionally, we have seen uh, guidance cuts coming in from global OEMs. To discuss all this and more, Atul Agrawal, the managing director of the company, is joining in now. Mr. Agrawal, thank you so much for joining in. Well, before we talk about the EV part of the business, I wanted to understand if there's any impact on demand right now that you're seeing because you've seen four global OEMs uh, cut their guidance. Today, we were speaking to Supridjit Engineering. They spoke about international markets being under pressure. Is that something which is happening on ground? And how much is export as a percentage of your revenues? So, you know, um, thank you very much for having me. If I can take just a few seconds to just give you a background as to who we are. You know, um, our legacy business was Gold Forge Fastener. It still is. And about five years ago, we decided that, you know, we saw electrification coming of age in India as well. And we started exploring for new product lines, um, we could start uh, within greenfield EV business. And we picked up the product of motor control units, which had a hardware and a software layer. Um, and currently after three, four years of that operation, uh, close to 40% of our revenues comes from that EV segment. Um, we are adding more products, like you said, we are adding genetics with a Korean partner. We'll be adding more products um, uh, in the EV supply chain as well. Um, now, going back to uh, the government's new policy, what they have announced, I think it's a great policy from a perspective that they are more, they are in incentivizing public transport. Uh, they want to do about 8,000 buses, e-buses in India. And I think uh, once the scale of e-buses reaches a certain level, it will drive economies of scale, prices will come down, and that acceptance will also come in private operators. So all in all, um, the new policy, subsidy policy they have on the e-vehicles, it looks good. Um, there's been a high penetration. I think the current penetration levels um, in e 2 wheelers mm -hmm. are currently about 10%. Um, and uh, right. there's a lot of momentum in that. Uh, Ola created the market for it. But we, you'll find that incumbents like TBS Motor and uh, Bajaj have come into play and they have a strong market share as well now. So. E2-wheelers e uh, have a momentum. Uh, I think they're picking up. Uh, you'll see a lot of growth in that. The new policy definitely uh, motivates other segments to come into play as well. So net-net, I think, is a good mm. direction. There could be a lot more money behind it, yes. Uh, but mm. yeah, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. To answer your question about slowdown from global players, yes, there's a, there's a challenge out there. Um, uh, but having said that, from our perspective, uh, we believe that our product lines um, and, and the new products we are launching have a, have a great potential. And with the zero base in those product lines, they'll, all, they'll give us a lot of boost to our overall growth in revenues. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, just to get back to you know, the BMW question, do you have any direct exposure to BMW or any of the global OEMs? Because it's not just BMW, even the others like Porsche, Volkswagen, etc., have been sounding a bit cautious. Uh, so if you could elaborate on that. So it, uh, it's a good question. I think, yes, um, all the BMW, all the three German top automakers, BMW, Mercedes, uh, Volkswagen, um, uh, Audi, etc., all are under pressure. Uh, the European markets are not growing very well. There's a lot of pressure on electrification coming in from China. The Chinese product lines are eating into the market share in Europe right now. So, yes. BMW uh, definitely under pressure. Uh, their guidance going forward does not look very good. And yes, companies or tier ones uh, who have exposure to German automakers right now will be under a lot of pressure. And we can see that also in some of the relationships we have with some tier one makers in, in Europe, uh, where we supply our components uh, as, as, a, as a tier two to them. Uh, there is definitely uh, a concern in their growth numbers. I would say they're not even looking at growth. They're probably looking at some negative numbers in the years going ahead. Right. Okay. So, Mr. Agrawal, now coming back to the uh, e-mobility business. In quarter one, you had indicated that the light commercial vehicle business is around 10% of your total revenues. Going forward, you might increase that pie, but a lot depends on how the new scheme is, the e-mobility scheme that is. Has it covered light commercial vehicles? Is it positive for you? Will you be able to increase that pie going forward? 
Yes, I think it's very positive for us, uh, especially keeping in mind the light commercial vehicle um, subsidies or incentivization and for public transport buses. Uh, it's very good for us. We have already acquired customers in the last two years in that space, including Switch Mobility, Volvo, Tata. Uh, so I think it's a great news for us. The volume will start ramping up. Um, SOPs had already happened some time back, but I think the volume growth will kick in in the next 12 to 24 months. So we are very happy with that particular movement especially keeping in mind our, our customer acquisition we have done in the last couple of years. Okay, so just to follow up on that, around 57% of your revenues are now coming in from the e-mobility business. And it has increased massively in last couple of uh, quarters. What does it end, uh, what do you end the year with? And are margins in this business higher than your uh, traditional business? So um, just to correct, our EV um, our revenues and the total revenues are about 30 or 35%. By the time we close this financial year, they'll be close to 40%. Uh, and yes, going forward with the new product launches we have, our vision is in the next three years, we probably be at 50%. Now going on the margin structures, um, these EV components have a lower margin structure to our legacy business of fasteners. But having said that, the return on capital employed um, is much better. These businesses are not that CapEx heavy. They are much more tech heavy. They are much more engineering based. Uh, we have built a lot of capabilities in that. So it's a good mix of our uh, uh, of our legacy business where, where the ROCs are not very attractive, but uh, these new businesses have a lower margin structure, but it's very attractive return on capital. So I think it's a great mix for us. Um, and like I said, they are not, um, they're not very capital intensive. They're very engineering intensive. Uh, so this EV guidance of yours in terms of a revenue contribution, which goes up from the current 35% to 40% this year, and then eventually to 50% in the next, you know, two to three years. What is the growth rate that you're anticipating uh, for the EV business? Because it's going to outpace, you know, your legacy business. And what is that uh, growing at? And also you've entered into an MOU with a, you know, Korean uh, company, uh, Yongin Electronics. Um, how much of, how, how is this MOU going to contribute? Um, you know, to your uh, EV growth going forward? So we, we believe that our uh, EV vertical uh, revenues from that will probably grow at, at a clip of about 25 to 30% a year for the next three years based on the product lines we have in place and the new businesses we are starting. Our legacy business of cold forge fasteners, uh, our guidance has been we'll probably grow anywhere between 7 to 10%. We'll be faster than the industry, but not dramatically high. So that's, that business is more steady state. We are acquiring customers and business on a slow level. Uh, but, but yeah, EV will probably outpace the growth dramatically going forward. Um, Yongin, we are doing magnetics products for them uh, where the captive customers is Hyundai and Kia. Uh, you can see the Hyundai Kia product launches in India already in the EV vertical. So we expect that revenue growth to come dramatically uh, from that particular product line in the next 12 to 24 months as well. Okay, last question before we let you go, Mr. Agrawal. The Bangalore plant, you know, it was set up three years ago. There have been some concerns around the capacity utilization. The last time we uh, heard was around 45 to 50%. By when do you reach the peak there? And what will that capacity be used for? Are you getting new orders or will you be using it more for the EV business? So that Bangalore facility is purely for cold forge fasteners. It's not for the EV business. It was 45% last year, uh, capacity utilization. This year, we touched 60 odd percent. Um, but I think the next next 18 months, 24 months, we'll probably reach about 75 to 80%. These are for our existing customers, non-EV. This product line is a non-EV product line, uh, basically commercial vehicles and passenger vehicles. So as and when the business is, is growing in that segment, we are acquiring new products with our customers in that. Um, so we, we are not unduly worried on capacity utilizations for that product line because the lead times to put up capacities for that is anywhere from 24 to 36 months. So we invest much ahead of time for our fastener business and that's what is showing in our, in our capacity utilization. It'll, it'll probably go up on an incremental basis every year. So we're not really unduly worried about that number. Thank you, uh, you know, for joining in and explaining the situation on the ground. That's uh, Sterling Tools. We'll get into a break. On the other side, we'll talk market uh, technicals. Uh, Mitesh Thakkar joins in on the other side.